So let's start probably. Um, the other week I was talking about a work of art from the 90s, the 1990s, that um, that I, I said, I remember, I remember when it um, was first exhibited um, and, uh, and, and it caused a lot of eye rolling, you know, it was all like, oh God, you know, that was, uh, yeah. And, and, and the, the, the piece that I was talking about um, was called Portrait of Ross, but it, well, one of them was a portrait of Ross. And, um, and we were talking about um, uh, Felix Gonzalez Torres, who placed um, boiled sweets in a corner and, um, and basically people could take them from the art gallery and, and, eat them um but of course you know if you if you watch that uh, that particular 11s is then you will learn that um, it was far 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 more than that and actually quite a, a compelling and and moving um work of art um so today we're talking about kind of sweets as well but today we're talking about a work of art that when i first heard about it all i heard was that a lady at chocolate and so what I thought this work of art was and I'm going to show you an image of it um, you can see some chocolate in the front there so what I thought this work of art was was um, a huge uh, cube of chocolate that a, an artist a lady called Janine Antoni an American artist and again this is I think it's exactly the same year. This is 1990. Um, so I had thought that the whole work of art was that she basically got a big cube of chocolate. I kind of thought in my head, you know, at this point, so this is a long time ago before I really studied art, but I was thinking she must really love chocolate. And so she has engineered a way to eat as much as she possibly can. Because what I thought this work was, was that she had this cube of chocolate um, and that she ate as much of it as she possibly could. And then the rest of it went on display. Um, and I was like, well, you know, bit bizarre, but kind of good on her. Why not? Go with the chocolate lady. Um, that is, of course, only, well, that's not, like, it's not even entirely true. Well, it's not even true at all that she ate the chocolate. Um, and that is only a, a fraction a fraction of um of the the the, the work of art as a, as a whole um so this is a piece called nor um and it was created by an american artist called janine antoni in 1990 um but you can see from this image i think that um there are two blocks in this art gallery um and so the block nearest to us is indeed chocolate. Um, <laughs> Nor, it is called Nor, but not N-O-R. Um, the work is called Nor. Um, so the, 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 the block nearest to us is indeed chocolate and the block furthest away from us, can you guess what that is? Because first of all, sorry, I've paused, I've got my uncle phoning me. <laughs> Um, so you think, you know, if, if she's eating chocolate, then, you know, maybe that's a delicious cube of marshmallow or something fluffy. That's how, you know, that could be quite delicious, couldn't it? Um, it's not chalk. It is lard, in fact. So this piece is sort of several, it's under several phases, I suppose, in a way, it's sort of performance art, although I don't know how many people saw her perform the, the, the first part of this work, because what Janine Antoni did was she took a 600 pound block of chocolate and she took a 600 pound block of lard and in one go she gnawed, it's called gnaw, she gnawed as much as possible of the chocolate and then the lard. I don't know whether she did the chocolate first and then the lard afterwards or like started with the lard because she's like, oh, and then went on to the chocolate or whether she like switched in between them. I don't know. But she basically gnawed as much of as she possibly could with her mouth. Obviously, maybe um, the, the lard might have melted. So she used her, her face to kind of make dips 
in the lard as much as she could also so to kind of carve away um at these two substances but she didn't eat well not surprising she didn't bother to eat the lard but she didn't eat the chocolate either um she spat it out and put it well she spat it on the floor she didn't, she didn't put it anywhere she just spat it onto the floor so that was the first part of this this work um not doesn't finish there, there because you can see if you look at this image you can see sort of through the gallery that's not a separate work of art um that uh, that is three mirrored cabinets um in which something else was displayed so here are the cabinets they all look rather she she they look rather beautiful rather um rather attractive um in those cabinets are these items. Here we go. So some lipsticks and some, well, so it looks like a plastic, um, a, a plastic heart-shaped tray for chocolates. But what in fact that is, is that is the, so the, the chocolate tray is in fact the chocolate that she had spat out so that's the the, the used the gnawed off chocolate um and and yeah and that was then melted down and and put into these um these casts to make these sort of trays so she made 27 or 28 of them depending on which article you read um and then the red lipstick okay let's talk about the red lipstick um oops sorry i whacked you with my foot um the red lipstick is made from the lard so the lard has also been melted down and bound with um beeswax and whatever else and, and pigment crucially red pigment uh and 130 or by some accounts 135 of those were made maybe they made 135 and some people stole them because they thought oh that might be nice lipstick um not actually realizing that of course half of the substance of that of that liquid had been um chewed up in Janine and Tony's mouth beforehand and discarded on the floor. So those cabinets, um, so these items were displayed in these lovely display cabinets um, and the whole work sort of had, well, parts of the, the, the work had different names. So, so the, um, so the chocolate and the, the, the lard, I suppose the work as a whole is called Gnaw, um, as in G-N-A-W, not N-O-R, um, and, or N-O-O-R, or anything else, like Gnaw, as in Gnaw, which makes sense, doesn't it? And the display cabinets were called um, lipstick slash phenethylamine, phenethylamine, Oh my God, do you know how, do you know how many minutes, possibly even hours, maybe no, maybe not hours, but minutes, I spent listening to some guy on how to pronounce phenethylene, and I don't think I've got that right now, before I did this live. I was walking and I was going around with my head going, phones going, phenethylamine, 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 phenethylamine. Anyway, it's kind of ruined it, hasn't it, really? Never mind. Oops. Um, I will put it in my blog and you'll be able to see what it is. Um, but, well, basically, phenethylamine, phenethylamine, oh, God, useless, is a stimulant that's found in chocolate. Um, and so she has used lipstick and phenethylene, phenethylene um, as, the, as um, plaques on this display cabinet, which kind of then is interesting because why wouldn't she just call it chocolate? Or why wouldn't she call it, I don't know, you know, repurposed chocolate or, or repurposed lard or whatever? Well, I think that plays into the whole... Um, the whole i'm gonna say meaning behind the piece because this you know it's kind of it's a simple idea but actually like um the the, the piece i did for hard candy so like the uh like 
Candy Spill or um, Portrait of Ross, it's called by both both names. It's if you if you start to delve a little bit deeper and if you start to try and think about what the artist is doing or trying to do or trying to make you think about, then you get quite a lot more out of it. Um, so first of all, just think about the way that this piece was made. I mean, kind of performance art, right? Um, so she, oh, oh Janine, <laughs> she's very old at all. Um, so she's, you know, using her face, using her mouth. That's all. She's not using any tools. I think possibly sometimes her hands, but mostly her mouth um, to carve away at these. I mean, that's a very unusual way of carving something, isn't it? Um, so she's sort of rejecting normal methods. But what she's also doing here, because I would imagine that things were getting quite messy, as you can imagine. Um, so it's just sort of then that process was kind of turned into performance art, if you like. And so this was 1990s. 60s, the 1960s, the 1970s were really really, I was going to say they were really famous for performance art, but um, it, within artistic circles, there was a lot of performance art going on. But most of that performance art was performed by women. And it generally speaking involved nudity. I don't think she was nude when she did this, but mess. Um, and that was kind of the whole point, you know, women sort of repurposing their bodies and, and using them for all sorts of things that might be quite visceral, that might be quite repulsive. Um, I'm thinking particularly of like, I don't know, Carol um, Schneeman, if you've heard of her, I'll we'll have to perhaps do something on her. Um, I'm not going to replicate her most famous work because it did involve pulling something out of her vagina, putting a big scroll out of her vagina, um, which I don't think anyone wants to see me do that. Well, if you do, then you're in the wrong place. And, and I'm not that, I was gonna say I'm not that kind of girl. Now I'm sounding prudish and I'm digging myself into a big hole and I'm going to shut up. Anyway, um, so yeah, so, so performance art, 60s and 70s, that she's kind of referencing, I think, um, is you know is very much about the sort of the, the feminist um the feminist lobby the fem feminist actions but yeah and if you think about the initial form of these blocks of chocolate and of lard they were both 600 pound perfect um cubes um, and then if you think about art again from the 60s and 70s, and if you think about the kind of artists that were, were using precision precision and, uh, and geometric shapes, I'm thinking uh, particularly actually about um, Donald Judd, who, who did a lot with, with blocks and cubes. You've got this sort of, um, this split between this quite masculine art or, um, or art that a lot of um, male artists tended towards versus this female messy um, performance art and I think you know if you think about the, the the initial shape of the blocks and then what she does I think that definitely feeds into the idea of um, how how things are, are made and and references uh, back to the to the, the 60s and 70s of that, that, that era and then if you think about, okay, so you might think, you know, like I did when I first heard about this work of art, oh, yummy chocolate, get her. She gets to eat as much chocolate as she possibly can. But then you find out that she actually spits it all out and makes something else out of it. And then you find out that she's done the same with a block of lard. That kind of turns sort of delight and perhaps, you know, desire for chocolate um, into something completely different. Um, and then if you think about the... Um, the, the things that are, are made from these blocks. So the, the, the chocolate turned into this box of chocolates. You know, what do we do with boxes of chocolates? We've had this before, with, again, with, uh, with Gonzalez Torres. You know, they're, they're, they're often gifts for people that we love, especially in, in heart shapes. Um, so something really, really <laughs> beautiful and kind, actually, um, when you understand what it is, you know the, the the process that it's been through um ooh that that turns into something really quite repulsive and then with the lard that's even more interesting i think because i mean you know you wouldn't want to eat lard in the first place um 
but then that's turned into red lipstick and I think it's really really pertinent that the lipstick lipstick is red because red lipstick red lips you know you don't need to be Freud to think about red lips and what that you know what that the the, the connotations there um so uh so I think it's uh this sort of this juxtaposition between being repelled and between um, a desire or, or, or objects that are supposed to make women look more desirable. Um, and then if you think about as well the idea um, that she was using her mouth and so mouths, there's I think a connection there that she's trying to draw between mouths and knowledge as well because what do babies do? ever had a, a child then you know they get to a stage and they start to put everything in their mouths and what are they trying to do they're trying to learn about it there is it, you know, it means knowledge if you take it a little bit further and if you th or take it right back i guess um if you think about adam and eve and the the garden of wisdom thinking about uh you know and, and the and the bite of the apple what did that give them that gave them the garden of wisdom Where's the Garden of Wisdom? I'd like to go there, I need some. The Garden of Eden, um, the apple gave them knowledge, but and with that knowledge came all sorts of other issues. Um, so I think that she's playing with this idea of, of, of using your mouth for, for knowledge um, and then the mouth as um, a, a, a sexual organ um, and, and something that inspires desire um and and this and this complete dichotomy throughout the the, the work of uh, attractiveness and desire and um and something that is completely repellent and a little bit well if it's repellent it's going to be disgusting you know I don't think I would particularly want to put lipstick on my lips that have been chewed by somebody else even by somebody that I liked. No, thank you very much. So there you go. So there is another example of a work of art that you think, oh yeah, that's quite interesting, but actually she's going deeper. She's going deep, but she's going deep. Um, so this is Janine Antoni, and this is a piece called Nor from 1990. It's exhibited here in, um, I think in Los Angeles. Um, and I don't know who owns it now. I think it's um I think the the, the rights are owned by um somewhere in the States, but I could be wrong. I think possibly in Los Angeles, but I could be wrong. So Janine and Tony. And this is um I'll stop sharing. So this is the first of a, another link of um of of uh elevens. It's another link of elevens. It's, I'm not putting powder on my face and I still can't speak properly. Um, so we've got another link through this month. Uh, so this is the first one. You're never going to get the link from this one, I'm afraid. Um, but maybe if you watch next week and the week after. So the link is not a work of art. The link is something completely random. Um, and like so the, the, the last one, if you were watching, you will know that it was Madonna albums. Um, if you weren't watching, it was Madonna albums. Um, and and so there's another link for this month that you can try and discover so that was called nor and we'll see what's coming next week <laughs> okay so who is off for a bar of chocolate or a bar of lard or both together anyone fancy replicating that one no oh, thank you Notice, by the way, how they were elevated. Oh, I forgot to say, but let's just very quickly have another look. Look how they've... Uh, so she's made them into sculptures. I forgot to say they were um, sort of displayed then on marble plinths. So, um, yum. Yes, yummy. Roll out the lard. <laughs> well, and of course, that's what you get, you know. You eat too much chocolate, you, you know. The natural progression of things, isn't it? Um, so, yeah quite uh that's another that's another aspect of the work i suppose the natural progression um hmm. Hmm. not fancying too much lard at the moment it's a little bit hot for lard isn't it 
Um, anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, I will pop that up with the, what's it called, the bloody fella, fenna, 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 no, fenna, thalamine. Oh God. Ages I took trying to learn that. Anyway, I'll pop it up. And you know what I'll do? I'll do a proper pronunciation of it on stories and I'll pop the um, the script up onto my blog, which you can see at beyondthepalette.co.uk. Um, and I will see you next week with the next clue into what the, the link is for June. But have a great day, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, and I will see you next time. Have a great weekend too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.